turn in your Bibles to Matthew chapter 1. We will begin reading at verse number 18. you have found Matthew chapter 1, verse 18, would you please stand and honor the reading of the Word of God. Matthew chapter 1, verse 18 says, Now the birth of Jesus was as follows. After his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Spirit. Then Joseph has her husband, being a just man and not wanting to make her a public example, was minded to put her away secretly. But while he thought about these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take to you Mary, your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. And she will bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. So all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the Lord through the prophet, saying, Behold, the virgin shall be with child and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is translated God with us. Then Joseph, being aroused from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord commanded him and took to him his wife and did not know her till she had brought forth her firstborn son and he called his name Jesus. Father, thank you for this time. Thank you for the word that we can read and to listen to and to study and to know that This is how you brought our Savior into the world. Lord, I thank you for this time. Be with my lips. Be with my mind. Lord, let the Holy Spirit just come upon me and help me to speak the words that you would have me to speak and nothing else. Lord, I thank you for loving us. I thank you for dying for us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You may be seated. been dumb before, Charlie Brown, but this time you really did it. (laughs) What a treat. (laughs) I guess you were right, Linus. I shouldn't have picked this little tree. Everything I do turns into a disaster. I guess I really don't know what Christmas is all about. Isn't there anyone who knows what Christmas is all about? Sure, Charlie Brown. I can tell you what Christmas is all about. Lights, please. And there were in the same country shepherds, abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them. And the glory of the Lord shone round about them. And they were sore afraid, and the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God, and saying, Glory to God in the highest. And on earth, peace, goodwill toward men. That's what Christmas is all about, Charlie Brown.
joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. Linus is right. I won't let all this commercialism ruin my Christmas. started this several uh, weeks ago, two weeks ago, and my question was, what is Christmas? We have commercialized Christmas so much that we have taken Christ out of Christmas. And without Christ, there is no Christmas. Without Christ, there is no Christmas. So what is Christmas? What is Christmas to you? What is Christmas uh, to everyone else? But most of all, what is Christmas from the Bible? Christmas is the celebration of the birth of our Savior. Christmas is the preparation of the coming Messiah. Christmas is the redemption has come. The Redeemer has come. Christmas is the only way to have life. Next week, if, uh, if the Holy Spirit allows this topic we will be speaking on, next week will be the only way to have life. And the key verse will be John fourteen six. but we will read the Christmas story from Luke chapter 2. But fourteen six says, John fourteen six says, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. Do you understand it? It had to be this way. God brought his son, his perfect lamb, his lamb without blemish from heaven to the manger, from the manger to the cross, from the cross to the grave, and he resurrected. He was raised three days later. later. And Revelation says, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. Because of Jesus. We have life. Christmas is, today we will talk about, the redemption has come. The Redeemer has come. And that comes from uh, Matthew chapter 1, verse 21. And she will bring forth a son. And you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. So today, this week, with all the hustle and bustle, with how many presents that you still have to go buy, with all the parties that you're probably uh, having to do this week, don't forget the real reason of Christmas. Presents are nice. Gifts are nice. Family is, is fun to be around sometimes. But don't forget the real reason of Christmas. It's not about the shopping malls. It's not about Amazon that comes to our house eight times a day. It's not about this. It's not about that. It's about Jesus Christ. And John tells us in in John chapter 1, he says, Behold the Lamb of God which taketh away the sins of the world. Christmas is the celebration of the birth of our Savior, the preparation of the coming Messiah, the redemption, the Redeemer has come, the only way to have life. So this morning, let's, let's walk through Matthew chapter 1. Verse 18 says, Now the birth of Jesus Christ was as follows. After his mother Mary was betrothed, engaged to Joseph, before they came together, she found she was found with child, with child of the Holy Spirit. And Luke chapter 2 verse 5 says, uh, To be registered with Mary, his betrothed wife, who was with child. If you have your notes this morning that I laid out for you, uh, you'll notice that I've uh, said many times that uh, the best commentary on the Bible is the Bible itself. I have, uh, we have come up this morning with, with scriptures that are relaying uh, the message here in Matthew, but it comes from other scriptures. It comes from uh, Deuteronomy. It comes from Isaiah. It comes from Luke. 
all over the Scriptures. If you are trying to figure something out, if you're trying to understand um, out what the Scripture says, before you go to anyone else, go to the Scripture itself. In 2 Timothy, it tells us that the Word of God is inspired by God, that the man of God may be fully equipped. Everything that we need for everything that God wants us to do is right here in the Scriptures. Now the birth. I want you to understand that now. Now the birth. It was already going to happen. It was already planned out. It was already promised by God. And if God has promised it, it is done. It is finished. It is over. The victory is already won because if God says it, it is done. Now. The birth of Jesus Christ was as followed. It is laid out. It is planned. It was already done from the beginning. In the beginning was God, and, and in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was as followed. After his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, was engaged to Joseph, they were to be married. But before... It says, before they came together, before they knew one another intimately, she was found with child of the Holy Spirit. Then Joseph, her husband being a just man, verse 19, and not wanting to make her a public example, was minded to put her away secretly. Now, you look at that verse and you're saying, what in the world is going on? Why is it uh, that he, being a just man, wanting to not make her a public example? Why would he ever make her a public example? What does it mean to be a public example? Go to Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 23 and 24, and this will explain If a young man, verse 23 says, if a young woman who is a virgin is betrothed to a husband and a man finds her in the city and lies with her, then you shall bring them both out to the gate of that city and you shall stone them to death. Notice it says them, not her, not him, but them. Stone them to death with stone. The young woman, because she did not cry out in the city, and the man, because he humbled his neighbor's wife, so you shall put away the evil from among you. So go back to verse 19 of Matthew. It says, Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man, and not wanting to make her a public example, was minded to put her away secretly. Not wanting to make her a public example, he knew the Mosaic law. He knew being raised up in a Jewish family, they knew the Torah. They knew the, uh, I'm going to get this name wrong, the Pentateuch, the, the Pentateuch, whatever you call it. They knew that by heart. They knew the Levitical law. They knew Deuteronomy. They knew the Mosaic law. They knew what had to happen because what was in the Scripture. So he knew what had to happen. He saw Mary being uh, pregnant, being uh, having uh, a baby in her womb, being conceived in her womb. And he knew exactly what that meant. By law... It meant her death, to be stoned, to be killed. And not only uh, her, but the man that was with him. But verse 20 says, But, aren't you glad for the buts that are in the Bible? But God, but while he thought about these things. He, he wondered about these things. He was worried about these things. Bringing her out into the public and making her a public example. Wanting uh, to be right with God because he was a just man, it says. Being a just man, wanting to do everything right. But while he thought about these things, behold, 
An angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take to you Mary, your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. Can I ask you something? Just as the Jewish boys, as a young man, knew the scriptures, they knew the law, they knew what it had to be done. How much of us, how many of us, know the Bible so well that when something comes up into our life, when something arises in our day, we can judge it by Scripture, we can read it by Scripture, we can uh, do it by Scripture, and know that we're doing everything that Scripture allows us to do and wants us to do. What happened in the wilderness when Jesus came out of the wilderness? He was tempted by Satan. How did he fight that? As it is written, man shall not live by bread alone. As it is written, thou shalt have no other gods before me. So Joseph knew what the Scripture says, but this is what happened. Behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary, your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. I urge you, I don't know how close you are to finishing the Scriptures for the year. Most of you try to, uh, most of us try to, I read the scriptures through in a year, and by February or March or April, we get to Leviticus, and it just goes, <laughs> just like some of the other uh, New Year's resolutions we try. We join gym, the gym, Planet Fitness, because they give you a no sign-up fee in January to, to come and to work out and January 27th, the pecan pie starts calling again. The Dairy Queen ice cream starts coming again. And, and there goes the diet plan. There goes your reading plan. Don't give up. Don't lose hope. Keep reading the Bible. Keep uh, spending time alone with God. Because Romans 10, 17 says, For faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. Be faithful to what God is telling you to do. I don't know how close you are to finish this finishing the scriptures for reading it for the year, but finish the race, be faithful, know the scriptures, be able to uh, have the scriptures to be the mirror and the guidance and the map for your life. Joseph knew what the scripture says, but the angel told him, don't worry about it. Because here's what the angel says. Verse 21 and she will bring forth. Notice that definite there. Will bring. Not maybe, not might, but will. And she will bring forth a son. And you shall call his name Jesus. Oh, what a definite. Can I tell you, when God tells you to do something, do it. And don't let anybody else question it because it's from God. If God tells you to do it, do it. When you read it in the Scriptures and you have peace with the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit is drawing you, don't listen to no one else. Listen to the Scriptures. Listen to Him. Listen to God. Let Him guide your way and direct your steps. And she will bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Back this up with Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. For unto us a child is born. Remember that this is the Old Testament. So what is spoken in the Old Testament is fulfilled in the New Testament. For unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. And the government will be upon his shoulders. And his name will be called Wonderful Counselor Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue will confess. That's what that will be upon his shoulders, will be called wonderful. 
whether you uh, are saved this morning, when you, whether you know him as your personal savior, in the end, the victory is already won. He has already defeated death, hell, and the grave. His name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Whether you call him a Lord or not, he is already Lord. You can mark it down because it says will be and will be, will be upon, will be called. It's already written. You can read that in Philippians chapter 2. It says uh, he is highly exalted and at the name of Jesus every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that he is Lord. Luke chapter 2 verse 7 says, And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in a swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the end. Now I want you to see something else. And she brought, it will bring in verse 23, And she will bring forth a son and you shall call his name Jesus for he will save his people from their sins. Not only Mary, you remember we talked about, I think it was last week, we talked about how Elizabeth as well was, uh, um, had a child of the Holy Spirit as well, and that was John the Baptist. He says, make way uh, for the coming Messiah. Not only did the angel come and talk to uh, Joseph and tell him everything he wanted him to do, he also talked to Zacharias and Elizabeth. Zacharias he talked about in verse 1 of thir- uh, chapter 1 verse 13 it says but the angel said to him do not be afraid Zacharias for your prayer is heard and your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son and you shall call his name Jesus you remember I said a minute ago if, if God tells you to do something and if you read something in your scripture and you feel the Holy Spirit the presses upon your heart to get it done. Do it without any questions. Don't listen to anybody else, but listen to the Scriptures. Because look at Luke chapter 1, verse 62 through 64. It says there, So they made signs to his father what he would have called him. And he asked for a writing tablet and wrote, saying, His name is is John. Why was his name John? Because the angel said, Do not be afraid, Zacharias, for your prayer is heard, and your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you shall call his name John. If you know the story, you can go back in Luke chapter 1 and read it. If you know the story, all the people around Elizabeth was saying, why are you calling him John? Because there's nobody in your family named John. We should call him Zacharias, or we we should call him this, or we should call him that. If the Holy Spirit tells you to do something, do it. Don't listen to anyone else. My prayer for my life and my prayer for you is that you get along with God and you spend time with him and you hear him louder than anything else and you let the word of God direct your path and your steps and and guide every moment of your life. Let's finish Luke chapter 1, 64. He says, and he asked for a writing tablet and wrote saying, his name is John. So they all marveled immediately. His mouth was open and his tongue loose and he spoke praising God. And she shall bring forth a son and you shall call his name Jesus. You shall call his name Jesus. No other name was right for Jesus because that is what his name is. For he will save his people from their sins. I want you to look at that real quick. 
His people. What, what does it mean by His people? I don't think I put this in the notes, but if you'll turn to Deuteronomy chapter 18. I believe it's 18. Yes. Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 15 says, Notice what 21 says, And then she shall bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Look at verse 15 of chapter 18 of Deuteronomy. The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from your midst. From your brethren, him you shall hear. So when it says, he shall bring forth a son and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Originally, his people was the Jews. But the Jews reject him. I believe there's some Jews today still reject him. They are still looking for the coming Messiah. But the Messiah has already come. The uh, Messiah has already done what he has uh, been told to do. In John chapter 17, it says that I have glorified you. I have finished the work you have called me to do. Verse 22 of 17 says, And the glory which you gave me I have given them, that they may be one just as we are one. He has finished the work that he is called to do, but the Jews rejected him. Why did they reject him? Look at Isaiah chapter 53. I know I'm spitting out verses that's not on his notes, but just bear with me. We'll get finished. Isaiah 53 says, Why did they reject him? Why did they not uh, receive him as the Messiah? Look at chapter 53 of Isaiah. Who has believed our report? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of the dry ground. He has no form of comeliness. And when we see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. Why did the Jews reject him? Why did the Pharisees reject him? Why did the people around uh, Judah, where he was from, Nazareth, where he was from, reject him? Because of verse 2 of chapter 53. He didn't look like a king. He didn't look like a ruler. There was no beauty. It says there was no beauty that we should desire him. Can I tell you, you can't come to Jesus on your own terms. You can only come to Jesus when the Holy Spirit draws you to himself. He is Lord, whether you receive him or, let me go back. He is Lord, whether you believe he is Lord or not. But it says he will save his people from their sins. So who who is his people? If the Jews have rejected him, who is his people? John chapter 20. Verse 31 says, But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you have may, you may have life in his name. So who is his people? The ones who believe in his name. The one that the the Holy Spirit has drawn him into himself. The one who has accepted his gift of eternal life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. 
He was despised and rejected by men. What what Isaiah 53 is saying. So who is his people? The one who believes. The one who has uh, that Jesus has come and changed their life and made them new. For uh, 2 Corinthians 5.17. You are new because Jesus Christ has made you new. So who is his people? Jesus. For he will save his people from their sins. Those who the Holy Spirit has drawn to himself, those who believe in Jesus Christ, those who believe shall be saved. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But God commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior and he's dealing with you right now, believe in him and you will have life. But without him is eternal separation in hell. I believe without a shadow of doubt that heaven is real. I believe without a shadow of doubt because the Word of God says that hell is real. And if you don't know Jesus as your personal Savior, you will spend eternity in hell forever. But if Jesus Christ has changed you and made you new and you believe that there is no way, so faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. If you believe that he has changed your life and made you new, you will have everlasting life. You are more alive now than you ever were before Christ. To be born once is to die twice. To be born a physical uh, birth is to die twice. To be born uh, twice, to be born again, you die once. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. I love that song. Verse 22. It says, so all this was done. Remember, we're still, we're still on uh, what the angel's telling Joseph. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was as followed after his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph. Before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Spirit. Then Joseph, her husband, her husband being a just man and not wanting to make her a public example, was minded to put her away secretly. But while he thought about these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take you, Mary, your wife, for that which is conceived is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit, and she will bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sin. So all this was done that it might be fulfilled. What was it? What had to be fulfilled? What was going to be fulfilled? Isaiah 9, 6, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. So all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the Lord through the prophet, saying, Behold, the virgin shall be with child and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel which is translated God with us. Isaiah seven fourteen. Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. If you don't believe every word of scriptures, read the whole scripture. Or if, you, if you're having trouble understanding some point of some part of the scriptures, go before it and after. Best commentator, commentary on the Bible is the Bible itself. So this is what the angel was telling Joseph. Don't be afraid. Don't worry about it. Don't take Mary out to the courtyard and have her stoned. All this was done that it might be fulfilled. 
Then what did Joseph do? Then Joseph, being aroused from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord commanded him and took him his wife. Are you doing everything that the Lord's told you to do? Are you doing everything that God has for you to do? Are you doing everything? Are you keeping everything that the Bible tells you to do? I can tell you that I'm not. Well, I try every day to die to self. But you know self sometimes rears its ugly head until I get on my knees and my face buried in this book. Then I see everything God wants me to see. But Joseph, being aroused from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord commanded him and took to him his wife. I think this is one of the things, verse 25, that the world misses. They see uh, all the nativity. They see uh, the baby in the manger. They see, they can even see the cross. But until Jesus saves your life, you will never truly understand that it came from the manger. He came from the manger to the cross. And he rose three days later. Joseph was told by the angel, don't put her away. But the one who is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit, and you shall call his name Jesus. For he will save his people from their sins. Verse 25, and did not know her, did not have relations with her, was not intimate with her until... She had brought forth her firstborn son, and he called. Why did he call his name Jesus? Because God told him to. Just as Zechariah and Elizabeth called John the Baptist John because God told him to. What is God telling you today? What have you read this morning? What have you read this week? And is it, the Holy Spirit is impressed on your heart. Can I ask you, the things that the Holy Spirit has impressed on your heart, have they been put on the shelf or they've been completed? Can I tell you that my God is the Almighty. And because He sent His Son to be born in a manger, to die on the cross, and to three days later be rose again, I can have life and do have life because He lives in me. And I want to do. And I pray that this is your prayer. I want to do everything that God wants me to do. My prayer for myself, my prayer for you is that Mulberry is bigger than Mulberry itself, not because of facilities, not because of this, not because of that, but because of Jesus Christ. We are here on this hill. We are here on Tuckasegee Road to glorify God and to spread the gospel. So this Christmas, this season, this next year, I pray that you do and I do all that God has commanded us. And I pray that we remember that Christmas is the celebration of the birth of Jesus Christ, the preparation of the coming Messiah. The redemption has come. The Redeemer has come. And Christmas is the only way that we will ever have life. We have no hope. Besides Jesus Christ, he is our hope. He is the only way to have life.
Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for the word. We thank you for bringing the Son to be the Savior of the world. Lord, we pray that we can be a witness. We can pray, I pray that uh, we can tell people that we come in contact with that you are the only way to, be, uh, to have life. Lord, and I pray that we remember what you have done for us. I pray that we remember what you have for us to do. Lord, and I pray that we do all that you have commanded us to do. And I pray that we search the Scriptures and we obey the Scriptures and we read the Scriptures and we read and live the Scriptures. God, just please let the Scriptures read us. Well, change our hearts, change our minds, change our ways to, to be after you and help us to glorify you and to spread the gospel. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.